Hello, I'm Lequesta Burak and welcome to Engineering a Sustainable World, a programme by the Institution of Chemical Engineers and ITM Business. Now, with record-breaking temperatures, droughts, storms and flooding occurring increasingly frequently, tackling climate change is the biggest challenge the world is facing. The UN has set out its Sustainable Development Goals with climate action and sustainability at its core. In this programme, we'll look at the role chemical and process engineers are playing in addressing climate change, the importance of collaboration between industry and academia, and why it's critical to inspire the next generation of engineers. Chemical engineers have the power to make real change to the world. If the energy transition is important to you and you'd like to work in it, then chemical engineers are some of the people at the forefront of that work. And so we need to inspire more young people. I want to be a chemical engineer to help feed poorer countries. I kind of want to be someone who builds things. Well, try and invent a colorant and apple juice. Chemical engineers are at the forefront of the energy transition, sustaining food and water supplies and working to make medicines available to all. Everything in the world is a chemical and the production, the use, the disposal and recycling of those involves the work of chemical engineers. So we're looking to attract more people into the profession with the skills and the charisma to uh, achieve the goals that we've set. And attracting future talent all starts here. Yeah! These Year 5 pupils at Northlands Primary School in Rugby could be future engineers. Today, they're talking ketchup. Who likes ketchup? The aim of today's lesson is to teach them when it comes to making ketchup, it's quite a long process. Sophie, Paul and Cameron might look at home in the classroom, but they're not teachers. They're part of an outreach programme developed and run by the Institution of Chemical Engineers. When I was young, I got this um, outreach in my school and it was amazing. It gave, it gave me direction and inspired me to um, study engineering and today I'm a chemical engineer, so I just feel that I can give back to um, some of these kids and inspire them as well. Working together, the children first have to decide what happens in the ketchup making process. It helps them to think about the manufacturing process and the role engineers play at every step along the way, hopefully inspiring them to do more when they're older. I want to be a chemical engineer because um, I want to help um, to like, make water cleaner. I want to build fast, easy to run, safe and cheap uh, transportation for people. It's nice to hear kids being so enthusiastic. I know that when I was at school I didn't necessarily have the opportunities to you know, get to speak to real life engineers or real life scientists and things like that as much. And I think it's great that we're able to get into schools and do that. We can do so much in the classroom, but I think to have somebody who's got lived experience uh, as a chemical engineer or a scientist, it makes it a lot more real for the children to be able to talk and interact with those uh, professionals, to ask them questions like, um, what did you like at school, what didn't you like at school, and what drove you to become a chemical engineer? We have uh, started a new outreach project called Discover ChemEng, uh, aiming to interest STEM students in chemical engineering. We've set up a global community, uh, a digital community where members can interface with one another to get career support through it. And through these and various other initiatives, we're looking to uh, grow uh, a vibrant and worldwide and increase the importance and the understanding of chemical engineering to the wider public. Aussie is a chemical engineer looking at renewable fuel. I think people don't actually realise how broad chemical engineering can be and the huge variety of roles that you can take within it. Anything that involves a transformation of some kind, a chemical engineer will be involved. So changing something from A to B, a chemical engineer um, is needed there. That means that industries like pharmaceuticals or energy or water or food, that's something that you could be involved with as a chemical engineer. 
and you can help to improve where you live. Cities are major contributors to climate change, emitting substantial greenhouse gases and consuming a significant portion of the world's energy. To help towards decarbonising the entire city by 2030, Bristol City Council is working with Amaresco, a company with global expertise in delivering large-scale green infrastructure projects. We worked out that it would roughly cost around £5 billion to decarbonise the energy system of Bristol. Quite clearly, the council hasn't got that kind of money. The government wasn't stepping up to that level of funding. So we've asked ourselves, well, could we attract some private sector investment into the city? The council devised Bristol City Leap and are working with Amoresco on a first-of-its-kind project which will increase green energy investment. Bristol City Leap came about as an initiative from the council um, several years ago now and they recognised, having declared a climate emergency, that they needed to partner with the private sector to bring in all of the capacity and resources and skills and, and investment to transform the city and try and meet that net zero objective for the city we think is a blueprint for other cities to potentially follow now. Over the next five years, Bristol City Leap will deliver nearly £500 million into infrastructure such as solar, wind, heat networks, heat pumps and energy efficiency measures. It will create 1,000 local jobs. Our team are mostly engineers and project managers working exclusively on the energy transition. And so we were founded back in 2000 and since then we've been working across the US, uh, Canada, uh, UK, Ireland and Europe uh, to deliver energy transforming projects. So I'm really proud that I'm part of a project that is the first one in the UK to start to unlock that large amount of private sector investment to deliver a city-wide solution. It's not just big organisations that can make a difference, individuals can too. Paul Jones is an entrepreneur at the forefront of using innovation to reduce the environmental impact of chemical processes. Well, I think the drive to redress the impact modern societal demands have on climate change will come in many guises and it requires a holistic response. Generally, as members of society, we all have our part to play in contributing to this effort in respect of regulations, guiding ethics and, of course, our own moral compass. These life choices stem from our immediate environment. However, as business leaders, entrepreneurs, engineers and scientists, I feel we have a greater obligation to utilise our positions to create solutions that will benefit the broader community and, quite aptly, we have an opportunity to help engineer a sustainable world. Among Paul's multi-award winning companies is Chemical Processing Services. It offers bespoke consultancy services in the field of polymer chemistry, providing support to a wide range of international companies. Well, I've been in the industry for 40 years now, and I set CPS up as a, uh, a company to house patented IP, and then to license that technology overseas to allow domestic manufacture to eliminate or reduce the carbon footprint associated with transportation. So we've been working on products utilising sustainable feedstocks and using green principles for manufacture, but um, we're still having to transport goods. So this was a way of, of eliminating that aspect. Two of Paul's businesses already hold the Queen's Award for Innovation and a Global iChemie Award for polymers designed to prevent endocrine disruption. CPS was the Global iChemie Awarder Startup of the Year in 2021 and, like his other businesses, won the inaugural King's Award for Innovation in 2023. And Paul and colleagues have teamed up with the Catalyst Museum in Widnes to promote employment in the chemical industry with their interactive game Chemploy. So this is Chempoint to try and inspire younger people to see the opportunities in the chemical industry. And new talent and ideas are needed. The petrochemical sector is accountable for a third of industrial energy use and for almost a fifth of global industrial CO2 emissions. See Through is a three year transnational multidisciplinary research project focusing on minimising the release of carbon emissions from the production, use and disposal of the most commonly used petrochemicals such as fertilisers and plastics. The industry currently is built around taking carbon out of the ground, mainly fossil fuels, um, and uh, either burning those or creating them into products that might be burnt in the incinerator. And, and that carbon, a lot of that carbon is ending up in the atmosphere and that causes climate change. So we think the industry has an exciting opportunity and that's to um, invert this carbon vector. So rather than taking carbon from the ground and putting it into the air, 
there's the possibility of taking carbon from the air and putting it back into the ground. And this creates what we would call negative emissions, emissions that can help offset perhaps other sectors that are, are difficult to decarbonise. This important work is being led by researchers at the University of Cambridge and supported by Hancock Hamlin and other partners. Hancock Hamlin is a freelance research facilitating company that educates and coaches engineers to operate efficiently in complex and emergent environments such as petrochemicals. You can't look at it in isolation because people, the, the, the processes will affect other processes further down the line, which actually can end up exacerbating the problem you're trying to resolve. So you might solve emissions upstream, but the processes that you, you've been put in place actually mean you're making it far worse downstream. So unless you take that holistic approach, you could end up being in a worse situation than you want to, which is why petrochemicals is, is, is a complex area and to, to look at. So you've heard about carbon vectors and reversing the carbon vector. It's a really simple idea. But it's a simple idea that gives direction to almost anybody that's interested and enables them to work out their contribution and know with confidence that that contribution is effective. So we've committed our future to creating a movement and creating the ability for engineers and the people that need to work with engineers to work in this different way and hopefully having a, have a much more significant impact on society and the world at large. Plastic waste is one problem we can all see around us. Plastics previously considered to be non-recyclable were destined to be buried, burned or leaked into the environment. Now a multi-million pound plant nearing completion in the northeast of England is set to prove those plastics can be recycled. Mira Technologies' new process, Hydro PRS, converts waste plastics into virgin grade recycled hydrocarbons, creating a circular economy. This first site is designed to prove the concept works at scale and can be rolled out worldwide. We're actually using water under high pressure and temperature as a solvent. So we're using water to crack uh, solid plastics back into the liquid oils and hydrocarbons from which they were made, which are used as a feedstock for the pet chem industry to make new plastics. So importantly for us, um, there are no limits to the number of times that material can be recycled in this way. For example, the plastic trays used for ready meals can't be recycled by traditional mechanical methods, but this plant can deal with them and other flexible multi-layered plastics that would normally end up as waste. Once shredded, any contaminants like metals and glass is removed and sent for normal recycling. The remaining plastic is pressurised and heated and sent to the Hydro PRS reactor, where it is mixed with what's known as supercritical steam. This breaks it back down into its component molecules so it can be reused in the manufacture of new plastic products, creating a new circular economy for plastic. Burning plastics emits roughly 40% more CO2 than coal. So from an environmental perspective, really, it's a really bad thing to do. We view this as a truly game-changing technology in the recycling industry. The plant will produce 20,000 tonnes of liquid recycled hydrocarbons per year, but the plan is to expand the site up to three times that size. It's incredibly important. It's a big milestone uh, for Dow, for Mura, and actually the industry, because this is the first commercial plant. We will slowly start to come into operation, and that's really important because we don't have enough advanced recycling material yet, and we need proof points like these. Well, I think everybody should be excited if we have something new coming up, and uh, hopefully this will be proliferated across the world. And change is happening across the world. On the banks of the River Danube, Pannonia Bio operates the largest single-site biorefinery in Europe, manufacturing a host of products with environmental benefits to multiple industries. We take a product like corn that has 12% protein and the rest is starch basically and we make that into a 37 or 38% protein animal feed which is very high end. The starch we make into ethanol which goes straight into your car and it's blended in most European countries at 10%. We make ENA, extra neutral alcohol, which gets sold to companies for vodkas and gins. Even at the beginning of establishing Pannonia, the uh, circular economy principles were, were in our mind. That's why our research and development team is targeted with trying to decompose corn kernel on different elements that either used as a value added product as corn protein concentrate or as a waste that can be reprocessed. For 
They want to shake up processes. Here, the fibre is being separated from the rest of the corn. In future, that fibre could be used as a high-quality prebiotic food additive, but for now, it's being used as feedstock for the biogas plant here. The company is also actively looking to increase its own energy efficiency. It's reduced natural gas consumption by one third. The alcohol production is a very energy intensive process. Most of the energy that we put in the distillation columns is lost in the cooling towers. Further down, we have to put more energy in the dehydration system. What we have done here is trying to integrate these two sections with MVR technologies. By the implementation of, of this project, we have reduced our carbon footprint. The future of the food industry will also rely increasingly on plant-based raw materials. And our barley protein and our corn protein for humans, we're making that at a low cost on a huge scale. And that'll be protein that's been made, not like pea protein or soya protein, which is unsustainable or people don't want to buy it. It'll be a protein that's made without chemicals put into it or dyes put into it, or colours taken out of it, it'll be natural. So we're, we're very proud of that. Also pioneering sustainable technologies is Salsa Chemtech, a global leader in fluid engineering. We develop a number of, let's say, uh, ecological solutions. Uh, for example, we developed a novel hydro-treating technology to produce uh, renewable diesel or uh, sustainable aviation fuels. Uh, from fats, oils in Greece. We also have developed a state-of-the-art process to convert uh, lactic acid to polylactic acid. This is uh, biodegradable and uh, recyclable biopolymers. And uh, we have a strong portfolio of, uh, of technologies and applications that enables the capture, the utilization, and the storage of CO2 emissions. They're encouraging their partners to involve them early in their separation technology processes to make them more efficient and sustainable. We often hear from our customers, uh, too late actually, <laughs> when a process has already been developed and when the optimization work has been done for years and was not successful. And the reason for failure is often that the right separation or purification concept was not properly deselected from the beginning. Joining together from the start is important. Swansea University works with industry to equip future chemical engineers. We can see that in our research, like more than 50% of our research fund, it comes with the collaboration with industry. We implement that relationship with industry in our teaching as well. Our final year master's students, they go in industry uh, in their final year two days a week. The world is uh, facing some really quite difficult challenges in the next century. And it's really important that we equip the next generation with the right skills and training to take on those challenges. And so such things as the UN sustainability goals, really equipping them with the, the skills and knowledge about water, uh, fuel and the energy sector that's, that's coming along. Not just in terms of engineering, but really in terms of entrepreneurship and how to form the business business and industries of the future. So encouraging students to take part in things like Invent for the Planet and to really harness those challenges and embrace them to provide a prosperous future. Or internationally renowned academics, they use their own research and implement that into their teaching in order to make the student up to date with the real challenges that is out there at the moment, not just the fundamental research, but just up-to-date real situations. And one of the examples for that is final year undergraduate students, they work as a group to solve the challenges such as sustainability and circularity. And also our postgraduate research students, they directly work in the research area related to water, decarbonization, renewable energy, and uh, healthcare. Humans are facing a difficult future. It will need some of the brightest and best minds to take on the challenges ahead. Thank you for watching Engineering a Sustainable World. We hope you enjoy this programme from me and the team at ITN Business. Goodbye.